This video shows how to use if statements in Excel to automate calculations. So we've talked about functions in the past and a function is basically um, I could say okay you know maybe I want to add two things or I want to subtract or I want to divide or whatever I want to do and that's basically just a function. But an if statement lets you take multiple arguments and then do calculations based on if they meet a certain criteria and that's why they're important. So in this example I'm going to pretend that I'm selling things from a store and I ship them and so I'm going to say okay everything that every order that falls underneath of $100 I'm going to do a flat $7.99 shipping everything that's from like $100 to $275 I'll charge $15.99 and anything over that's going to be a flat percentage of 6%. So if I wanted to make it easy for myself to figure out shipping, I could use a nested if statement. So that's what I'm going to do in this example. So I'm going to come over here to the cell where I want to put the formula, and then I'm going to click on this box up here, which says FX, and that means insert function. So I'm going to click that. It automatically puts an equal sign here and here. And then if you need to, you can type for if for if functions and click go. Now I've just used it so for me it was obviously in my list and I'm going to select it but that's the easiest way to get to it. And then I'm going to say OK. And then here I can enter in this information. So I want to first say that you could enter the information directly up here if you prefer by just closing this box um, or you can actually enter it here. So I'm going to start with the first one and I'm going to say so what we just talked about if the cell so that's A3 and the reason I found that is A and 3, so the column and the uh, the column first, and then the row. That's the cell. And I'm going to say is less than, and that's the symbol right next to the M on your keyboard, 100. So if that's the case, then I want you to enter in, and I'm going to put parentheses around this so that it shows up exactly the way I put it in here. Oops, 799 in parentheses. So if the way that this reads from Excel, if you look at it up here, is if this cell is less than 100, then enter the result 799. So I can click OK and you can just see this happen. And technically this worked even though there's nothing in here because zero is less than 100. But I'm also going to enter in like 99 so you can see it and then show you 100 and it's going to say false. However, if I'm trying to ship things, a false value doesn't really help me know how much to charge someone for shipping. So we're going to do more. So the way I go back to it is the same way. I'm going to click on this function box and now if that's false I'm going to do something else and this is how you do a nested statement. I'm going to say if and a new parenthesis to start a new a new um, a new function basically. I'm going to say a3 again. Now this time I want to say if the cost is between a hundred and $275. Now because I've already said if it's less than 100 do this, I don't have to do anything with the 100. I'm just going to say if A3 is less than 276, meaning up to 275. Then I'm going to say a comma and what I would want the result to be is I'm going to do a parenthesis. That's kind of small but if it's hard to see here but if you can't see it look up here you'll see exactly what I'm typing. Parentheses and then I'm going to say dollar sign 15 oops 99 not comma <laughs> and in parenthesis so that it knows what value to enter and then I could if I wanted to close this parenthesis and click OK and it automatically worked because this hundred is over my original thing of less than a hundred but now if I type 276 the value is once again false because there is no data to put here there's nothing that meets that criteria in my statement yet so I'm going to go back into the statement and before the end parenthesis I'm going to click. You can see it's there. It's a little hard to see. And I'm going to just type a comma and basically this is saying um, at this point if the value is less than 100 enter this. If it's less than 276 enter this and then I'm doing a comma and I'm going to say some more. I'm going to say if it meets something else. Again a beginning parenthesis. And then I'm going to say is a3 greater than this time 275 meaning is it 276 or more so you gotta think about your values there and if so comma then I'm gonna say this is what I want you to do I want to do a3 times and that's the symbol on uh, shift 8 on your keyboard times 0 0.06 that's the percentage that I want you to multiply by I'm gonna say a flat 6% fee for anything over that amount and then I'm going to end parenthesis. So I should have two in parentheses at that point and technically up here three because I really have three if statements. And then I'm going to say OK. And now this value 
did the calculation I wanted to. So if I do $99, it's going to give me my original $79. If I do 100, it hits the next category. If I do 275, I should do, I should be doing these in let me do these in new cells just so you can see it. I'm just going to drag this formula down. Okay? So if I do 99 like I just showed you, 79, 100 bumps up to the next category, 275 as you see, and I'm testing my um, breakpoint criteria to make sure that my formula is working correctly. So then I'm going to say 276. Now it's doing a different calculation. And then if I were to do like, you know, $850, again, a calculation. Um, and then again, 25, 799. So you can see that the formula continues to work. So the key in that is that you do nested if statements. And the one of the biggest important things in that is that you don't end any of the parentheses until the very end. So you could have just typed this out in here, the whole thing. Or like I did, you can use the function arguments box and you can start with the first one and then all the other nested ones get put in the if false uh, box next to value if false. And that's how all these work. And that is basically how you can create a nested if statement in Excel to automate calculations. And then like you saw, I just grabbed the little box in the right corner, I drag down and that'll continue to work. I could have also put something in here to say that if a three is equal to zero, enter a zero. I didn't really see the need for this example, but you could definitely do that. Um, and that's basically everything that that is. Hopefully this was helpful.